Hi, guys. Welcome to the Simple Doesn't Mean Easy podcast. We are here weekly working at simplifying things in our lives one day at a time, one step at a time. And together, guys, we can do this. I'm Michelle Visser, your host. And this episode, we're going to be talking about one particular thing. That's really a whole lot of things, actually. Particular kind of thing that I feel we really need to have in our diet daily and fill you in on why I think that and some things that you really need to know about this. So up until now, this season, we have talked about in great depth, salt and a particular kind of veggie, sprouts, which actually, again, There's so many sprouts, so I shouldn't say it's one particular kind of veggie. It's a really great veggie that's really easy to get in your daily diet, for sure. It's a great episode. Um, We talked about sugar, a very favorite episode of mine, because sugar is near and dear to my heart as a sugar maker. And we talked about fats. So much fun talking about that with Ruth Ann, the differences between lard and tallow and lots of great details on good, healthy fats. So that's a summary of the topics we've covered so far. Today, we're going to talk about fermented foods and drinks and how they impact our gut health, why gut health matters. And I think, I think you might be convinced to try some. If you've never tried a fermented food or drink, I really think if you stick with me, especially till the end where I'm going to be describing at the end my personal favorite foods to ferment and how I use them. I think I might make you a convert if you are not already on the fermented food and drink bandwagon. So I'm glad you're here. Stick with me. Before we actually get into that, I actually have some questions for you. I have three questions for you. Do you ever eat or drink something that's been soaked in bleach? Guessing not? What about food that's been sprayed with some fungicides? Would you eat that without any problem? Or what about food that's been soaked in pesticides and then not cleaned, just put on your plate? Would you be comfortable with that? I know these are silly questions and I know your answer, of course, to all three of them, but why would you want to do any of those things with your tea? Whether you're talking about iced tea or hot tea, trust me, you want to avoid tea bags, first of all, because tea bags, almost all of them that you find out there have been whitened with bleach just to make it more appealing, more pretty when you open it and use it. Or if they're not whitened with bleach, then they very likely have some sort of plastic used to make the bag. So whether it's bleach or plastic or both, Do you really want to soak that in hot water and then drink it? I did that for a good portion of my life without thinking twice. And then when I really started thinking about it, I realized that is not something I wanted to do. On top of that, there are literally no regulations on tea companies about when they can harvest their tea leaves if they've been chemically treated in any way in the fields and how long they have to wait to harvest. And there's no regulations about if they have to even clean the leaves after they've been harvested, even if they had just been sprayed with pesticides. So again, I don't want that soaking in my hot water and then drinking it. So the solution is actually pretty simple and absolutely delicious. You want to go with organic teas that are loose leaf. If you go to solelyrested.com slash teas, I share with you there my absolute favorite eight, my eight top favorite teas that fit both of these categories and a whole bunch of products that I love to use for loose leaf teas and make my tea. But best thing that's at this page, solelyrested.com slash teas, T-E-A-S, is a discount code because I know organic tea is always going to cost more than the regular bag tea, the unorganic, right? But this company that I'm linking to, that I've been using for years that I love, not only have delicious teas, not only have organic teas, not only have loose leaf teas, but they are the best price I have found anywhere. They really have great prices. And on top of that, I have a sweet discount code waiting for you 
right there, solelyrested.com slash teas. If you want to know more about teas, I actually did an episode with a tea expert that was kind of super fun. Um, and I think Marlene is going to be back in a few episodes too. She was great to talk with and she's so knowledgeable. If you go to season three, episode 13, we talk about if tea is a healthy choice and why or not, why not? That's season three, episode 13. Okay. So before we go on, hit the pause button, seriously, go to solelyrested.com slash T-E-A-S and check out these teas. They're great for iced tea. They're great for hot tea. Go find my eight favorites. Give some of them a try and use that code, solelyrested.com slash teas. Seriously, hit the pause button. I'll be here when you get back. Let's start off today's episode by talking first and foremost about why is gut health important? Because fermented foods drastically improve our gut health, but you're not even inspired to go any further than that in this whole journey of fermented foods unless you understand why gut health is really, really important. So I'm going to break down a few reasons for you. First of all, this is something people don't really talk about often, but I think it really matters, especially to women in menopause like I am who really struggle with this issue. Fermented foods help with weight loss. Healthy gut bacteria controls our body's response to the carbohydrates that we eat. And we either turn those carbs into fat or energy. But obesity has been correlated to a lack of diversity in our guts. So you see, diversifying our gut microbiome is key to decreasing our body fat. Isn't that really cool? Um, if we can alter that microbacteria within our digestive system and improve it, then we can allow for better basically fermenting of those carbohydrates in our system. And we can make it easier for our body to burn the carbs and turn them into energy instead of storing them. And then, of course, we're improving our chance at weight loss and staying at a healthy weight. It also helps fight against diabetes too, which is great. So that's a huge bonus to fermented food that I don't think is talked about enough. Second of all, fermented foods have been shown to make a huge difference in our body's immunity and our ability to fight off germs, colds, flus, sickness in general. Um, this time of year, I'm recording this right now in a very cold spell in January in New England. And throughout the winter, you know, we think about immunity and my family has been fighting a cold going through everyone. And Bill actually has it worse than others. He's just really battling it. But I can't convince Bill to eat fermented foods or drinks. So I'll just be honest right there. I can't convince him. He has no desire to. And he knows all the stuff I'm going to tell you. So, you know, sometimes you just move on with life and you stop fighting the battle. <laughs> but fermented foods definitely improve our body's immune response. Because, you see, the gut is literally 70% of our body's immunity tissue, like the part, it's 70% of the part of our body that fights off disease and colds and sicknesses resides in our gut. So it just makes sense that the gut plays a huge role in keeping us healthy and fighting off the bugs. Third thing about fermented foods, there has been shown through numerous studies, a really big connection between our gut and our brain which I find fascinating. Um, you can actually take a deep dive, do some Googling and read lots of studies about this. But basically there's the gut brain connection that is so complex that scientists refer to the gut as the second brain. And I mean, we, we now we see evidence of this. It's happened to all of us that we're under a huge amount of stress and we're really anxious about something. And then we get this stomach churning stuff going on, right? And all of a sudden you have major indigestion and you, and you know, it's because I, I'm dealing with this anxiety right now and here comes the indigestion. It could be um, partially because 90% of serotonin, which is a neurotransmitter that's linked to maintaining our mood and helping it not fluctuate too much, it is actually produced in the gut. So that's probably a lot of the connection going on between our mind and our gut. 
more and more studies are emerging about how fermented foods curb our anxiety. And again, I don't think this is talked about enough either. Um, the probiotics in the fermented food have a potential to actually cure depression. So eating fermented foods can literally boost your mental health. And again, in January in New England, when we don't ever see the sun and it's really cold and we're stuck indoors, anything at all to boost my mental health and ward off the seasonal depression is huge, huge. So I try to eat as many of the fermented vegetables that I have in my fridge and the fermented fruits as I can. Like daily, I make sure I'm getting some of it. Okay, so the fourth thing I wanted to tell you, there's the weight loss, there's the immunity, there's the connection with our mood and, and, and um, depression. And fourth, eating fermented foods and drinks actually reduces our risk of cancer. A study in 2013 published in the Journal of Cancer Research found that there is a correlation between certain types of intestinal microbacteria and the likelihood of developing lymphoma. Another study the same year showed that some unhealthy gut bacteria may actually cause stomach cancer by impairing our immune system from regulating the inflammation of the stomach lining. And that's just two studies. I'm certain if you do a deep dive on Google, you'll find a lot of studies that make a connection between the healthy gut helped and boosted by fermented foods and avoiding cancers. So why do we all suffer from poor health? I'm hoping if I help you understand that as well, a few of you will raise your hands to at least one or two, if not all of these reasons that we suffer from poor gut health. And you'll realize, wait, I have a lot of reasons to look into fermented foods. Um, but first, before we get into that, let me pause really quickly and let you know that Azure Standard is an independent food supply chain that connects food suppliers directly to consumers. It is so much better than walking into the grocery store. I would take it any day of the week over going to the grocery store. On top of that, they hold their products and their suppliers to a really high standard. Azure Standard offers only real food with natural ingredients. They skip all the junk. So this week, I actually, in my Azure order, I picked up my largest Azure order ever. It was 44 items packaged into 17 boxes or bags. Great food. I mean, I got some raw cheese. I got a, an amazing box, 20-pound box of organic pears. I got some barley, lots of wheat berries, some bee pollen. I love putting that instead of sprinkles on baked goods or on my yogurt. I got, what else did I get? Oh, granola. So, so good. Their granola. Lots of adaptogens for making my hot chocolate that I drink daily in the winter. Lots of good stuff. I mean, I could go on and on. Um, but they're the sponsor of this season. So definitely, if you're at all curious about this amazing independent food supply chain, go to solelyrested.com slash Azure, A-Z-U-R-E. And I list my absolute favorite things to get from them. I get them often from them. I think I have 12 items there. It was really hard to narrow it down to 12, trust me, but I did pick my top favorite and I listed them there. It's solelyrested.com slash Azure, A-Z-U-R-E. And you will also find um, how not only more about them and how it works, but how you can find the latest location near you. Okay. So why do we suffer from poor gut health? <sighs> There's a lot of reasons. And I can almost check every box, not everyone. I can check, um, well, really two, now that I'm thinking through the list, that I struggle with, that I just have not eliminated from my day, from my regular um, routine. <laughs> and these things lead to poor gut health. So it's it's a reason that I eat more fermented foods because I know I struggle with a few of these. First of all, stress. I don't know if any of us can really eliminate stress from our diet or from our day, not our diet. <laughs> um, but I know there's certain things we can do certainly that will help us, you know, deep breathing and relaxing. And But when it all comes down to it, this is one thing that on our list, maybe the one thing that is impossible to totally eliminate in my opinion. But 
when our body is under stress, we absolutely are depleting the good bacteria that live in our gut and it causes all kinds of health problems. Um, another thing is antibiotics. This is not something I, I've, I've actually never had to take antibiotics, which I know is kind of crazy. Um, but I, I think we've gotten much better in the past few years, but when my kids were young, antibiotics were just the bomb. Like everybody was always putting their kids on some antibiotic for some illness because their doctor was prescribing it. But I do think we've improved overall in this category, but I still think we are taking way too many antibiotics. And the problem with them is they're not just killing the bad bacteria in our gut. They're killing off the good stuff too. And they're leaving our bacteria totally depleted, including the good stuff in our gut. And then this, I think, went crazy rampant in 2020, antiseptic cleaners. We are always putting, you know, you go in any grocery store and right there is a dispenser that you can put this antiseptic on your hands to get all the germs off and you can get your antiseptic wipe and wipe off your cart to get all the germs off. But you know what? Some germs are really actually good to allow them in our body because our body needs to have all the different bacteria. And if we're not ever allowing ourselves to be, you know, around germs, then we're really not helping our gut at all. Also, not enough time outside is huge. I think it's something that everyone struggles with in today's world, not only because of the fact that we're so busy and we're always on the go, but also, um, you know, screen time, I think, really keeps us from being outdoors. We can blame the kids, you know, and always point the finger at the kids about this. But the truth is, it's true for adults too. And it's true for anybody who has a job that requires a lot of screen time. It just makes it harder to be outside. You know, if you have a job that you're working outdoors, this isn't a problem, but not a lot of people do. But if you're not outside enough, you're not getting exposed to literally the germs that you should be being exposed to. Um, and then there's the whole not getting enough dirt time. This is something I never struggle with in the summer because I am in the garden as much as I physically can be. And I tell you, there's something about just putting your hands in dirt. I, I have felt it again and again and again. Like you literally feel better and it's good to be exposed to all those micronutrients and micro, the microbiome of dirt to be exposed to it. It makes you have a healthier gut, but people who aren't getting time in the dirt, they're suffering in their gut health. And finally, this is one <laughs> I absolutely am guilty of. You might all know what I'm going to get at because I talk about often how this is something I struggle with not getting enough sleep. If you don't get enough sleep, then there's so many reasons that it impacts all of your health, but specifically your gut health. So if you can check off any of those boxes that you are exposed to stress, antibiotics, antiseptic cleaners, not enough time outside, no time playing with dirt, or not enough sleep, then you should seriously consider a way to add some sort of fermented food or drink into your diet daily. So what fermented foods and drinks do I make regularly and do I eat almost daily? Let me tell you. If you follow over on Instagram, you probably right away know one thing because I feel like I'm talking about it often, kombucha. I've been making kombucha for almost a decade and I absolutely love it. I tell people often, I think it's the most fun I have in my kitchen. I love creating different flavors, experimenting with different recipes for my second ferment. It's just a fun thing to do. And it's a great way to replace carbonated drinks like Coke and soda that aren't good for you. And I feel like it's one fermented thing that people, maybe of all things, that they think is the hardest, that people get just really leery about and have a lot of questions about and feel really intimidated by. But I'm here to tell you, if you know the right tips and tricks, if you know like the insider secrets, and there aren't that many, you can be a pro in no time. In fact, I should put in a little plug here for my course. If you want to join Kabucha Academy, I spent a lot of time putting together every single detail that I wish I had known when I started out on the road wanting to make my own kombucha. And it's something you can go through at your own pace. And within literally just a day or two of going through it, if you want to go through it that quickly, you can be a kombucha expert, know everything you need to know, and you can be making this amazing drink for your family with with no problems and with no error. 
So if you want to know more about that, go to solelyrested.com slash kombucha, K-O-M-B-U-C-H-A, solelyrested.com slash kombucha. Um, Another thing, let's see, I'm trying to picture my top shelf on my fridge right now to tell you what's in there. (laughs) And this is a negative to fermented foods, absolutely, that I like to refrigerate them. They don't have to be. I do have some fermented foods down in my root cellar. You can keep them in a dark basement or even in a dark cabinet if the room doesn't get too warm, wherever the cabinet is. Um, but I really like them refrigerated because it keeps the it slows the fermentation down to almost stopping it. So I can keep them in the fridge for over a year and the taste doesn't change. The texture doesn't change. Whereas the ones that I keep in my root cellar, they do get a little mushier. They do get a little more fermented tasting. So you do have options, but I prefer to keep them in the fridge. So that's the negative. They absolutely take up space in your refrigerator. I kind of have two thirds of the top shelf of my refrigerator just devoted to fermented foods. And everybody knows to stay out of mom's section of the fridge because <laughs> nobody really wants my fermented foods, but I don't know why. I try to tell them all the time, guys, these are really good, but, but I do sneak them in a few ways that I'll tell you about and everybody likes them just fine. It's just they don't go on their own and take out the fermented foods to have a snack, you know. Um, so I have cherry tomatoes and peppers, both that I grew in my garden. Well, also dilly beans that I grew in my garden last summer. And the I think the one I the thing I use the most, I, uh, it would be a toss up between the cherry tomatoes and the peppers because I don't just use them on a tossed salad but I use them in any way you would use tomatoes and peppers. I mean, you know, for tacos or in on pizza or you name it. And yeah, I think they're probably, well, they're not my favorite fermented food. I'll get to that in a second. (coughs) But I think they're my favorite. They are. Those two are my favorite fermented vegetables. If I had to choose one, I'd say tomatoes, cherry tomatoes. Um, The dilly beans I like, but I don't incorporate them in any way. I haven't figured out a way to like use them in a meal or something. I'll just get a few out once in a while and have them with my sandwich at lunchtime, maybe, you know, just for kind of a crisp, sour little side thing on my plate. (laughs) I don't know what to call it. I was going to say side dish, but it's not a side dish really. Maybe it is. Maybe jelly beans are a side dish. Um, I have fermented cauliflower and broccoli, both of them. Don't have them in my fridge currently. They're not what I would say are my favorite. And again, like the dilly beans, I haven't figured out more than one way to use those two things. I will just put those on tossed salads, both of them. And they're a little more tart than I would like. I don't know. Broccoli and cauliflower are just not something I really like to have a different tart taste to them. They're fine, but they're not my favorite. Um, And then did you know you can ferment fruits? I fermented peaches for the first time this year. Such a big success. I had ordered 20 pounds of peaches from Azure Standard and I wasn't going through them fast enough and I realized I need to do something to preserve these. So I decided to try and ferment what was left of them. And man, what a good choice. So, so good. But my favorite fermented food of all time, drum roll please, blueberries. Fermented blueberries are so good. They keep so well in the fridge. I've kept them for longer than a year. I love using them on my yogurt and my oatmeal and my cereal. So good. And of course you can use them in, you know, smoothies or milkshakes or however you can use them. Any way you would use blueberries, you can use fermented blueberries. What do they taste like is what something, something that people are always asking me. Honestly, I would say, I always tell people, it's really just a salty version of whatever that food is. Just slightly salty. So I love the fruit because I think it's really a neat taste to have a slightly salty, sweet fruit. Um, and sometimes, depending on how long it's been fermenting, it kind of tastes a little bubbly. Does that make sense? Is that a taste? Um, it tastes a little seltzery. Does that make sense? <laughs> but it's good. Really, really good. So that's what I currently have going on in my fridge right now, ferment-wise. And then I have my always have my continuous brew of kombucha in the corner of the kitchen going to bottle up some later this evening. I think I'm going to make some Coke flavored later this evening. Coke flavored kombucha. So good. And it's completely all natural. No junk whatsoever. Um, So there you have it. Let me know if you'd like, I don't know, maybe should I do some episodes 
very specific to fermented foods, you know, break them down, answer your questions, tell you exactly how I make these different things. Um, I will link in the show notes to my directions that I've written up, my recipes for everything that I just talked about. Everything. I'll put it in the show notes. But if you're somebody who likes to hear it and hear me talk about it more, let me know. Maybe I should do some episodes on fermented foods. So next episode, it's going to be different. So watch for it, download it, and let me know right away what you think about the next episode coming up. It's going to be different than anything I've done before. And I'm actually changing up in some exciting ways some things about the podcast that I think you might really like. I'm get, I'm really excited about it. And I took a long break this time for a lot of reasons, but one of the reasons, um, how do I explain it without really explaining it? <clears throat> one of the reasons <laughs> I'm eliminating the problem with this change in the podcast. So there won't be these long six weeks of where the heck is Michelle? What's going on? Why have we not had a podcast to download? Um, so I'm excited. So stay tuned for next episode. And uh, I had a few reminders. What did I want to tell you? Oh, I didn't remind you that I'm still, I have not given away the books. I have um, a giveaway going on. For those of you on YouTube, I will hold up the books here. You, the winner will win a copy of Just Show Up by Drew Dick. He was on the podcast back in November. Really great episode. He was really a joy to talk to. And my book, Sweet Maple. So I'm giving away a copy of each to one person who leaves a review. And it's so, so simple. Just go to Apple Podcasts, take a second, click the five stars and leave a sentence review. But everybody who leaves a review on Apple Podcasts um, gets a chance to win. And I'm going to be giving that away in another week or two. So get your reviews in there, please. And what else? Oh, and over on YouTube, if you want to catch this episode over there or just go over there, you know, listen to the episode, but then go over to YouTube. I'm actually have a giveaway going on over on YouTube of a copy of Sweet Maple and free access to either one of my master classes that you would like, either Making Maple Syrup University or Kombucha Academy. Free lifetime access to the winner. And all you have to do is go over and subscribe to my YouTube channel and leave a comment on one of the most recent videos. It can be this video for this episode or another recent video. Everybody who leaves a comment on any of my videos created in 2024 has a chance to win a copy of Sweet Maple and access for life to one of my master classes. So please take a second to go over to YouTube and do that as well. And the link to this episode on YouTube will be in the show notes. Um, <clears throat> is there anything else I wanted to remind you of? I think that's it. Oh, no, there was one other thing. I actually, just before I started recording this, I made a coupon code that is just for you guys. This is something I'm not mentioning anywhere else, just here on the podcast. If you'd like to join Kombucha Academy and learn the insider tricks to making the best fermented tea, AKA kombucha in no time flat. Go to solelyrested.com slash kombucha and use code podcast. That will get 30% off just for you guys. And to encourage you towards adding some fermented drink to your daily diet to have all these wonderful benefits we've been talking about, go to solelyrested.com slash kombucha and use code podcast, P O D C A S T, podcast. Okay. So that whew, is actually it. Thanks so much for listening, guys. Please join me next episode for that fun announcement. And um, we have lots more to talk about on this whole idea of things that we should have in our diet daily and things we don't know about them. So I'm excited about all that's to come. Remember, guys, it is easy to forget how blessed we are to live this life. So enjoy the simple everyday efforts. I know. It's not easy, but it's a good life.